Fashion Tech Alliance involves higher educational institutions, small, medium and big enterprises and the research center. This project has been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union and is aimed to facilitate knowledge exchange between partners and to design and pilot learning experiences to engage students in a fashion tech residency program, embedding young talents in the company's innovation activities. A central objective of the project is to design multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and intersectoral learning activities involving international students from five European universities. The contents of the lectures have been specifically created to match the needs of fashion tech learning. They have become open educational resources to allow future engagement between a European-wide fashion and textile HEI community and are available under Creative Commons Sharealike 4.0 with the aim of a wide and free distribution, access, use and reuse. Ready to learn more about fashion tech? Enjoy the lecture! Today I will have a lecture which is titled Perspectives on Digital Fashion Value Chains and Business Model Development. I am Rudrajit, I'm an Associate Professor at the Swedish School of Textiles uh, at the University of Boros. And predominantly the focus of today's lecture would be uh, on digital fashion value chains and digital business models in fashion context. So let me go through the uh, table of content of what we will be discussing today. Uh, briefly, I will talk about the general concept of business model. I will then go in explaining a little bit further more into the digital business model aspect, which is in line with fashion value chains. And then by demonstrating this with certain examples, some project examples, I will try to explain the fashion uh, big, big business model and the fashion value chain context. So what is a business model? There are of course many definitions of business models. If you go through both academic and practitioner oriented literature and uh, documents, a uh, plethora of uh, definitions would be available, but some of them are more commonly used than the others. Uh, one of the common used ones is that a business model is a conceptual tool. It helps you to identify the particular business logic of a particular organization or effort. Another definition says that it is a tool which helps you to rationalize how a firm or an organization generates value. And when it comes to generation of the value, how it creates value, how it delivers value, how it captures value. So as I mentioned that there are more examples of definitions that you can find in, but these are the most commonly used ways of representing a business model. Also uh, ontologic, an ontological model. So there are different tools after defining business model, uh, we need to know what is the content to how, what is the structure of a business model. So there are different types of tools. One of the most prominent ones uh, is called the business model canvas. It was developed by uh, Osterwalder and uh, you can find many different online uh, platforms where from you can download this. Uh, but in general, the business model canvas uh, which is, as I mentioned, the most commonly used way to depict a business model. It's like a blueprint. It's a blueprint of a company strategy, company or organization strategy. Uh, and as a result, it includes the structure, the contents, the business processes, what type of systems are used in order to connect to the suppliers, in, connect, in order to connect to the customers, what type of products and services are rendered by the uh, business. So this in general shows a visual way to depict a business. As I, I was mentioning earlier, it is a way to rationalize the value generation of a firm or an organization. That is how an organization creates, delivers and captures value. Uh, so basically it's a shared ontological language or ontological model which describes, visualizes and as, assesses a business model. So as I was saying, what goes into this business model canvas, there are nine elements which goes into the business model canvas. As you can see here, this describes a general business model canvas. Uh, 
the nine elements, I will go very quickly uh, through it. Most important question, apart from the contents or what we call the building blocks of the business model canvas is when somebody wants to fill out a business model canvas, be it an organization who wants to uh, create a mental and visual model of how they're doing the business, how they're creating, capturing and delivering their values. So where to start from, which component or which building block you should start from. So here, there are two different ways I will explain you. Uh, the starting point could be the business uh, from the customer segment customer segment, which means that uh, you list down a set of, I mentioned here top three, but list down a mention, uh, set of uh, customers who are your core, who provides the maximum revenue to your business. Once you've identified that, identify what type of products and what type of services that you are offering to these identified customer segments. Uh, what is the job? that is being done through your product or service for the customer, how are you satisfying the customer? Uh, what you believe is uh, the most important aspects of your products and services for the customers. So you, this constitutes the value proposition of your business model. Once you have done that, you identify how are you creating, generating uh, money or revenue streams within your uh, business by providing these value propositions to your customer segments. How are you monetizing? What is the way of monetize your business in your uh, in uh, in as a part of your business model? Once you have done that, you go into how you're communicating with your customers. How are you delivering your business uh, value proposition? Is it through e-commerce or is it through brick and mortar? Uh, sales in retail stores or any other form or format. But how are you connecting? Are you making the product reach your customer segment? Once you have done that, you go into establishing how are you maintaining your relationship with your customers, either through social media or are you uh, having some sort of a proper marketing strategy? What type of marketing strategy? So what type of customer relationships are you maintaining? After that, you go into the value delivery side, where the starting point is the key activity. Uh, key activity means that what type of daily operations you are doing within your business model. What are the daily or day-to-day -day operations at the tactical level, the operational level that you are doing in order to deliver these values to the customers and the products and the services. Once you have identified these key activities, you need to know what are the key people, what type of knowledge base that you need, what type of resource base do you need in order to keep running your business, key cap capabilities in your companies. So that constitutes the key resources as a whole. Once you have listed down that, you need to know that are you doing everything yourself inter internally or integrally as a vertically integrated firm? or you are collaborating with key partners in your supply chain. Maybe key partners could be a digital platform if it's a digital business model. If perhaps you are collaborating with an IT service provider or you are collaborating with any other player within your supply chain, maybe a social media uh, platform. So these are the key players or the key partners without which your business cannot work. It's not necessarily or not, not accustomed to add the suppliers or your manufacturers here because they are just producing the goods for them. But often we also include them as key strategic partners within the business model canvas. And finally, you look into the top costs within your supply chain or your business model, which means that for doing these activities and by, for, by engaging different types of resources, what is the cost that you are incurring? What are the most costly aspects within your supply chain? And that is important to know because that will determine your uh, the revenue stream minus the cost structure is giving you the profit formula of your company. The lower the cost structure and the higher the revenue that you generate, the higher will your profitability within your company.
but that is not only the way one way to fill out the business model canvas and another alternative approach i have uh, documented here where you start from the value proposition rather than the customer segment you can start from the value proposition then move into the customer segment to determine that who is the right customer for delivering these value propositions then you go into identifying what is the right channel to reach out to your customers how to establish better customer relationship uh, then define the key activities that are required in order to create this value and deliver the product and the services to the customer and then you go into it narrating the resources the key partnerships and finally look at the cost structure and the revenue stream which determines your profit formula a secondary way or an alternative way perhaps you there is of course no one-to-one -one relationship but of you can think that if you are having very novel product and a, a destructively new product in the market there instead of starting with the customer segment perhaps you can start with a value proposition what type of value you are actually delivering to the customer by understanding the latent needs on the other hand for a product which is more market back based upon the market requirements then you identify your customer segments and then weave your customer value proposition so there is no one size fit all here but for different types of products different types of ways the products are being delivered into into the uh, to the market to the customer you can fill out the business model as you want to there are other different types of value canvases as well for example this is a value proposition canvas um, again there are as i mentioned that there are many online tools or online digital uh, web pages where you can have these type of canvases uh, which are very hands-on for working with for both academic uh, researchers and also for businesses this can be downloaded this is the most important one the value business model canvas and give a uh, shorter glimpse of the value proposition so the value proposition only concentrates on the value proposition part of the business model there you identify what are the jobs that your customer is trying to get done based upon that you design your uh, products and the services to meet the latent needs of the customer in order to identify what the customer wants to do what type of problem they want to solve uh, and then based upon that you design those functionalities or design those aspects within the value proposition and render it through your products and the services and in line with that you identify what are the pains which means that what is annoying or trou troubling the customer what are the challenges the inherently customers are facing from this gap you will be able to identify and design the right value proposition uh, what would make the customer happy that means the gains and how to solve this pain and how to create the gain means how to create the value for the customer Well, going a little bit further into the digitalization of the business model, as is the focus of today's lecture, uh, more on digital business models, we discussed about the different building blocks of the business model. So what are the key aspects where, or the main aspects where you can digitalize your business model? In line with the te technology and ele e uh, electronic network diffusion, digitalization, as you see, and you can compare this with a business model canvas, you can digitalize either the product or the service, which means the product, instead of a physical product, you make uh, uh, sell it through e-commerce. So you need to make a digital rendering of the product or a particular service, for example. In fashion business sector, a fashion company could try to uh, offer a digital avatar or a fitting service. So there you are offering a digitalized service that will in line with that change the cost structure in your company because it could change the pricing mechanisms N new costs could be added like uh, digital conversion of the product could be a new cost whereas maintenance of the product in large amount of products in the warehouse or distribution costs could be sufficiently reduced so there are then alternative cost structures that are connecting to the digitalization of the products and the services and that can also be connected to digital intangible aspects of the digital goods like you do digital marketing digital digital availability of the product to different social medias like instagram and so on and so forth so marketing digital fashion marketing could be an option 
connected to the digitalization of the product. At the same time, you can also uh, you you can also uh, digitalize the organization, which means that you identify the key aspects of specialization and coordination within the firm. And based upon the digitalization of the products and the services, you digitalize certain business processes, so digital manufacturing. You digitalize your product development. Um, uh, on, or data exchange, you have digital data integration along the supply chain, you use cloud systems, you have more digital information systems uh, for tracing and tracking the product, you can actually have digital processes related to traceability or blockchain, for example. So these type of digitalization of different business processes are connected as well, that can increase your specialization, but also your collaboration and coordination. But also another point that, which is not mentioned here, it can also increase the digital innovation within your firm. So just to give you an example, uh, these business model canvas and the points to think about as was mentioned in the previous slide can help you to make a transition from the current state of digital business model that you are having or your status quo to a more better state or a more uh, specialized stage or more more coordinated state, uh, which could be the future state. So give, I'm giving you an example of a make to measure shirt brand uh, because of uh, data security uh, reasons. I could not ex uh, mention the name of this brand, but it is a famous uh, SME, which is offering make to measure shirts uh, using biometric sizing. Uh, in, in EU. Uh, so as you see on the left, the listed value propositions in its current digital business model is uh, offering services uh, services to customers, uh, a fast business to business um, manufacturing chain, uh, having structured data of the customers because they are uh, giving, there is a, their sizing is based upon a uh, biometric size measurement. Uh, they ask who, questions. One is age, your height, your gender, and your uh, bust size if you're female or if you're male, your shoulder length. And based upon that, they're giving more than 99% more than accurate biometric sizing for your shirts. And uh, these shirts are uh, available, uh, can be purchased online through e their e-commerce platform. Uh, so there's a high degree of depersonalization that has been offered based upon your make to measure body sizes. But at the same time, they are not only offering directly the uh, services to end consumers like us, but they're also selling clothes through these services to as a B2B company, like they're also selling clothes and uniforms, for example, to Marks and Spencer in a, in a, in a, in a virtual, virtual, virtual personalized product. So you see that uh, I will not go into detail, but as you see here, the value proposition, what values are offered, like perfect fitting, perfect design, perfect comfort, bespoke means made to measure, personalized service, uh, what they're trying to solve, the fitting issue. Fitting is a big problem when it comes to made to measure and customized garment. So uh, they're trying to solve this by offering more accurate uh, uh, bespoke and uh, biometric sizing. Customer is co-creating the product. So customer is also a designer that this type of value co-creation is an important aspect to lock in the customer and keep the customer for a long period of time, have a high service level in your company. And what type of products and, and additional services they are offering. So this is the value proposition. And in order to build this value proposition, you need the key partners delivery uh, activities and the resources, like you need IT, CAD, CAM, you need for marketing, Google AdWords, uh, logistic services. You have, of course, manufacturers and suppliers of garments and the accessories and the fabric. Uh, then on the customer side, how are you, who is your customers, uh, which are of the age group uh, 16 plus? Uh, most important is the middle age, the business people, office goers, uh, B2B, what percentage of the products are B2B and what percentage of the products are B2C. 
that is business to business and business to consumer, which means that you are selling it to your end consumer or you are con selling it to a brand. For example, as I mentioned, they're also selling uniforms, customized uniforms to Marks and Spencer. What is your customer relationship types, channels, and hence based upon that, what is your profit formula? How are you making profit? You see the base price of a garment is around 60 euro plus different types of fabrics, bespoke uh, manufacturing. So there is a variable pricing. And these are the future aspects, which means that these are the add-ons they would like to do based upon mapping their business model. They see that where they need to concentrate more into developing their digital fashion business model for, uh, for their personalized, uh, customized, uh, bespoke product. For example, they would like to in reduce the customer returns from different partners and channels. At this moment, even though they, for their B2C, the, the product that they're selling directly to the end consumer, they have a very low return, but in the B2B business, they have a high return. So their aim is to how to reduce returns uh, in their business uh, ongoing. Based upon that, they see that there are key aspects of uh, activities and partners that they could add, changing cost structure, and also creating new types of business streams or revenue streams, like transaction-based revenue streams. So you see that by mapping your business model along the business canvas, this visual mapping helps you to understand the scope for transformation, the scope of transition and adding on what are the gaps. So this is also a way to analyze the business model gap and how to make a better transition towards higher performance or in a future state where you have a higher digitalization of a business model. A few examples in line with the previous slides, what I was mentioning that you can either digitalize your product or services or your organization. A few examples uh, are there, for example, Nike ID, where you see that a customized, personalized uh, feature of co-creating a Nike shoe is there. You can actually choose your color, choose your uh, material, read a little bit of your styling, etc. Uh, this is a Swedish uh, fashion brand called Eton Shirts. They offer a, a online service of, uh, sorry, the Taylor Store. And this offers you the uh, possibility to customize different types of aspects within your shirt. You can first choose your fabric. Based upon that, you can choose your color length, your style, your color, your button types, your uh, pockets, etc. So different types of customization options are there uh, for Taylor store in Sweden. And then you have Shima Sheiki, a Japanese whole garment uh, made to order garment uh, knitwear company, which is one of the famous in the world. Also, there is a British startup company. Now it's an SME, which is called Unmade, which is offering also uh, digital services related to uh, production of knitwear, which is a locally produced and also you as a customer can go into their website, you can actually order it, customize it and personalize it and the order has been placed and it's locally produced as well. Uh, so they call them actually a digital fashion company, digital fashion provider. Uh, it's quite interesting how the companies do see themselves in the different format, different role, if different uh, business model that they perceive them into. Going into the digitalization of the fashion apparel organization, some examples. Uh, Eton Systems is a Swedish company which offers unit production system for uh, garment producing. So here you see that how this type of unit production system can be used and integrated along the entire value chain here from the product development and product concept stage to uh, digital 3D product development, product data ma uh, management system, marketing and sales, and then going into the production process and the production line. And these information are all in, entered into a cloud-based digital zone, which connects back to the 
uh, unit production system you see here. So this is sort of digitalization, the organization, and in fact, the entire uh, business process or value chain. Mm -hmm. Rebot is uh, also an interesting company. They are offering robotized way to uh, sew products uh, and fully automated uh, possibility to sew uh, garments. They have started with uh, pillow covers, but now they are moving into uh, sewing uh, uh, simple t-shirts so that they and the benefit you can see here uh, you can actually uh, sew one pillow cover in 30 seconds 30 almost 30 seconds uh, reduces uh, the amount of operation or handling time of the product more number of if, uh, products could be produced and as a result the efficiency and the productivity is higher so we see that how automation digitalize digitalization automation and it can transform the operations and the apparel organizations here. Here, the product is not digitalized. The service is not digitalized. It's the same pillow or a t-shirt. Here also, you can produce a simple garment out of it. So the product or the service here is not digitalized, but here the connecting business processes, the value chain aspects, which renders the product or produces or delivers the product that has been digitalized here. One of the pioneering example in the, of the recent times, I would say is, uh, Hugo Boss's smart factory concept. Uh, you have uh, many YouTube videos on this as well. And if you also search Hugo Boss smart factory, there would be a lot of information coming up. Uh, but to summarize, uh, you will see that their concept of digitalization of organization based upon the smart factory con concept in Ijmir, Turkey is based, based upon four aspects. One is smart data management, where they uh, he have a control over the key performance indicators, KPIs, in order to manage their uh, flow, product flow within the shop floor. Uh, they uh, create real-time uh, information to track the information of the product in a group of 10 to 15 workers who work together so that they can track uh, the products and have high degrees of internal visibility in the production lines, in the warehouse and the distribution for inventory management, et cetera, uh, robotizing their production processes so that they can have a hybrid production system or with higher human machine interaction. Uh, so large part of their production process has been automatized and robotized and also using uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, like AR, VR concepts for training of the operators so that they know how to work with uh, the robots. So here when human and the machine are working at the same floor, how to manage this work in a more efficient, effective way that requires training of, of the personnel and for these quality, quality aspect related issues in product information and machine information aspects, they use AR, VR techniques in order to uh, educate and train their personnel. So now what we are actually discussing is going into the aspect of uh, uh, digital technology, digital, uh, digitally enabled technology innovation. Uh, this contractive cycle is an important aspect of showing how the digital revolution has taken place based upon a set of uh, principles like uh, technology innovations that we create this sort of certain areas of prosperity. Uh, so started with the first in the 1800s based upon invention of steam engine or cotton, uh, which was revolutionizing the industrialized society. With ne next came the uh, next big thing, which is based upon real steel and then based upon that railways. Uh, the third one uh, was in the 1900s with electrical engineering and chemical in industry uh, blossoming. And then came in the 1950s around the fourth in the fourth industrial revolution, which is predominantly based upon the uh, industrialization phase, where the automotive industry and the petrochem petrochemical industry uh, sort of made a boom. So basically, this contradicts uh, wave actually uh, discusses the different waves and cycles of evolution of technology. One comes after the another, and the others are being replaced overall. Uh, and this is also the source of 
creative destruction cycles because one technology comes in, one mega technology comes in and transforms the industrial landscape, industrial value chains as seen for a certain 50, 60 years. And then we see that the progression comes into the next uh, big thing as, as a set of or, or set of technologies or this bundle of technologies that leads to long-term prosperity as well. So I see uh, we call it as the fifth industrial revolution as we, at this moment where the industrialized society has been reflect, uh, replaced by an information society. So the, here the next big, th big thing is information technology, more intangible rather than the previous industrial revolutions been driven by more tangible aspects. So here the technology innovation or digitalization role takes in where we see that the fifth industrial revolution is a uh, source of this information society. How this shapes uh, more outside in, from an outside in perspective, how this information uh, society is shaping the ICT or the information and communication technologies, how this is also impacting uh, different ways or different dimensions of information society, what we call as the five dimensions, the uh, e-commerce, e-collaboration, e-communication, e-information or entertainment or e-education. I will go into each of them uh, in a while in the next slide. So as you see that these aspects of uh, digital business model can systematize along different functional aspects. One is of course, in uh, connection to electronic based or in electronic induced, and this can be based upon a, a matrix which is created by a recipient of a service exchange and the recipient provider of the service exchange, the digital service, who is providing it and who is receiving it. Uh, so if you put them on a matrix, then it could be a business, it could be a consumer, or it could be an administration, and also the Provider could be again a business, it could be a consumer, or it could be an administration. A business to business provider would be something that a, a brand, uh, sorry, a, a supplier is providing a business to a manufacturer, or, or a connection is between a supplier and a brand, or a supplier and a manufacturer, uh, not the end consumer. Uh, it could be business to business, like a retail brand selling a product to a consumer, which is business to consumer. Here it is. Uh, then it could be consumer to consumer. A lot of uh, peer to peer platforms for collaborative consumption are there. A lot of secondhand platforms are there for peer to, uh, consumer to consumer based marketplaces, uh, social media, where there are a lot of uh, uh, aspects like, like, for example, Instagram, where you can sell, sell peer-to-peer -peer block it, for example, or several secondhand uh, places where you can sell peer-to-peer, -peer, peer, which are more consumer-to-consumer -consumer driven interactions. It could be consumer-to-business, that the consumer is selling to a consumer, but through an uh, intermediation of a business, or it could be directly from a consumer to a business, like a rental, for example. Uh, Apart from that, there could be intra-digitalization, which is more digitalization of internal processes. Uh, I will not go into the aspect of touching the administrative part because what we normally see in the fashion business models, we have the four different combinations of business to business, business to consumer, consumer to consumer, and consumer to business in a fashion value chain most common in the fashion value chain business model. Of course, we also have intra-business digitalization where the business processes are digitalized, but we do not see very much where the administration plays a role in terms of digital integration. This is common in other types of digital business model for education, for education tech, for example, or, or, or uh, government tech, for example. So there are different aspects of business to uh, administration, administration to business, administration to consumer, and so on and so forth. What I will go in further is to identify and show you a little bit about the different activities that are in this digital business. As I mentioned, the four aspects of uh, e-education, e-commerce, e-communication, e-collaboration. As you see that based upon the different actors, you have these four activities. E-commerce includes the service exchange 
processes of initi initiating or negotiating a trading transaction, which means that you are selling a product to as a brand or you're selling a product to a customer, it's a sales platform, or it could be a C2C or consumer to consumer platform. Uh, it could be a multi-sided platform, which means that it uh, say, for example, you have a personalization option where the consumers can co-create the product and you also have this co-created products been sold by uh, or, or given order to produce to different manufacturers. Uh, these are called multi-sided platforms. Uh, uh, and, and there you can actually involve both consumers and uh, co-creators and also a set of pro, uh, source, sourcing companies or manufacturing companies as well. Uh, E-collaboration where there is inter interaction or interactiveness among uh, different organizations leading to higher collaboration like manufacturing services or uh, or, or sourcing services. This could be paid, it could be non-paid services as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a paid service. So this type of manufacturing or sourcing services are available uh, and uh, they are creating high degrees of collaboration between different actors in the supply chain or in the digital value chain. E-communication, provide communication platforms like uh, service platforms or social media through which also digitalization fashion business happens these days. And e-education, mostly in terms of creating training and education. This could be in terms of knowledge sharing platforms, like for example, something related to traceability knowledge sharing or um, some related to sustainability related knowledge sharing platform. This type of digital platforms could be knowledge sharing and knowledge building platforms as well. So different types of business models where you can see the digitalization of the activities could take place. So going beyond the business model, we have been so far dis discussing the digital business model, the components of the digital business model, the key activities which can be digitalized within the scope of the business model, but how does it uh, connect to a value chain and what is a digitalization of the value chain? Before that, you need to know a little bit further on the concept of value chain. A value chain is basically a set of activities or a set of business processes uh, that a firm is doing in order to create value, a set of activities, like you have a raw material, say fiber, you add, do certain processes, uh, you make yarn out of it, so then now the yarn has a higher value than the fiber. From the fiber uh, yarn, you make and weave it into uh, a fabric, then the fabric has a higher value or higher cost, uh, price point than the yarn. From the fabric, you make a garment, then the garment is having a higher profit value. So basically, this is a value creation step, stage by stage, or a set of business processes which adds value to the product in the chain. Uh, you need two different aspects of it. One is you need a set of assets or resources in order to create the value. And also you need a set of capabilities and competences that needs to be there in order to create a good performance or what we call competitive advantage by the firm. So underpinning the business model, there is always a value chain. So what we see that the digital landscape is transforming this value chain. What we discussed is the value chain will then comprise of a supplier, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, and the end consumer. And in between, there is a certain transaction and distribution. The product moves from the manufacturer to the wholesaler and so on and so forth. And there is this transaction that the customer is paying the retailer, the retailer is paying the wholesaler and so on. Uh, so there is a certain in, uh, intermediation between manufacturer and the customer, which is done by the retailer. And typically the retailer in mostly in the fashion value chain has the highest power. Um, and that is because they are the ones which are directly in connection to the or are in contact with the end consumers. But with digitalization and digital plat uh, platforms or digital uh, activities, what we see that there is a scope of higher disintermediation that you can have direct trade between uh, digital trade or e-commercing between the manufacturer and the customer. You can have logistic service uh, based upon on-demand services between the customer and the manufacturer so the intermediary role of the 
retailer, which was giving a large amount of power to the retailer uh, because of increased market transparency or digital transparency uh, of uh, is creating lower market entry barriers. So the manufacturers can sort of go in and create more end-to-end -end pipeline integration with, within the scope of digitalization. We see that even though if it's not the manufacturer, we see that there is a higher scope of bringing down the power asymmetries within the value chain that, that historically has been controlled by the retailer. We see that higher degrees of end-to-end uh, integration is possible to the digital value creation opportunities. So just an example here, we'll see that this gives rise to many new different novel ways of thinking about uh, fashion value chains rather than this type of intermediary based value chains. We see that a much end to end digitally integrated uh, pipeline based uh, value chain can be foreseen. Uh, and that creates a much more integrated, enhanced uh, possibility of creating a, a digital fashion value chain. So what we see is uh, in different cases from the traditional online chain where we, uh, we see a lot of changes in the customized online fashion chains, where we see there are changes in shopping experience, customer loyalty would be higher, uh, the time to deliver the product to the consumers, which is called the lead time, is lower, it's getting shorter, amount of inventories in the system gets lower, so you are lesser based upon forecast and more and more you are demand driven. As a result, your retail performances are improving as you are moving from a forecast driven system to a uh, uh, demand driven system, different aspects like uh, how much products you are selling at full price, uh, how much of the products are lost sales, the returns aspects, these are much lower. Uh, production batch sizes are becoming smaller and smaller instead of moving from high stock based production systems, you are moving into make to measure one piece uh, production systems and the risks are lower because you are having a lower amount of inventory. And finally, when we move from even further from these customized online fashion chains towards a more integrated end-to-end -end fashion value chain, there we see that the shopping experience are more co-creative and inspiring, that you have a different channels of reaching out to the customers through social media, you are offering different activities like uh, fitting services, you, you are offering uh, avatar uh, in order to drape your products uh, on, on and see how you look into uh, with the products uh, to the customer, customer loyalty and customer lock-in as a result would be higher. Uh, the time the customer has to wait to get the products is even shorter. Uh, inventories are because of this personalized products are maintained in a much more unfinished state and only after knowing the customer's demand, these products are being produced. As a result, the uh, sales are higher, the discounts are lower, and the returns are lower. As a result, we see that this gives digitalization, gives a scope of, as we mentioned in the previous slide, lower, lowering the mediator activities of different players and or creates a disintermediation. We have a higher degrees of creating end-to-end -end integration, as we mentioned, create a B2B2C, business to business to consumer, demand-driven, uh, supply chain, which can be offered, offering more small series, more personalized products as a whole. So, as I mentioned, in order to explain this further, I will give you a couple of demonstrative examples. It was a European funded project, which was aimed to create a complete digitally integrated value chain and end to end integrated value chain. And what we call is a consumer driven local production with the help of virtual design and digital manufacturing. So there would be two systems that was conceived as an idea, the front end system, which is the B2C, which is the business to consumer. There we will offer a lot of uh, functionalities or uh, possibilities of the customer to create a digital avatar, a digital 3D sales configurator and interactive rendering of the of, of it as well, which means that once you've de developed a 3D garment, you try on 
virtually try that on on a digital avatar so this is the front end digital virtual design and sales technology that could be offered through uh, different types of handheld devices like laptop ipad etc uh, and in the back end then once the customer has chosen a particular uh, product and given placed an order this customer purchase order needs to be converted into a manufacturing order and you need to uh, provide uh, produce that particular product and this is enabled by a digital manufacturing technology the second part of this that is b2b and this con consists of a particular product development stages assembly of the product and printing cutting and preparation and then you create the production line which is digitally integrated and the product is been produced provided this can be done in a consumer driven digital environment local production uh, it can create uh, higher degrees of co-creation between the consumer and the brand because the consumers are co-creating the products uh, that can create higher degrees of loyalty and customer lock-in but also from the production side it can bring back production in in high cost areas for example uh, so to go on a little bit further more into this uh, concept i mentioned about the two parts the b2b and the b2c the business to consumer side as i mentioned has different types of features like uh, you can see a sort of a path of how to organize this uh, interactive avatar where the consumer logs into a particular brand uh, portal and starts creating his or her own avatar select the gender select the personal measurements the hair length color other details and you can also save your avatar for future usage once you have chosen the avatar as you see here a depiction here you now create your product so you first choose your fabric then you choose the component your print color all these things and you now create a 3d version of your garment here you see but now the next thing is you need to try do a virtual try on you want to see the how this garment looks on your avatar so you do a virtual try on you can have the possibility to turn on your avatar and in different postures because it could be a sportswear it could be an outdoor garment you need to see how you look like this can be topped up in the near future with different types of functionalities and functional requirements that if you are now wearing this garment and you're jogging how to simulate this jogging environment and see that how much stress or strength that you are feeling how much uh, perspiration you are having are you feeling hot or cold with this cloth on your body? How is the feeling of this product uh, in terms of abra uh, abrasion or how much uh, friction that you are having? So these type of more uh, uh, sort of uh, bioengineering of the fabric and the garment could be added on to just not only the fashion styling part as well. And then finally, when you're satisfied with your virtual try on, you want to place your purchase order, you have to click the button and you put your personal information like shipping details, payment cards and so on. And you go into the confirmation side and you place your order. Now the order has, has to be raised. This customer unique customer order that you have placed that has to be handled by a product data management system. So your 3D garment order is now converted into 2D patterns, what type of fabric has been selected, the print design, the customer data all goes into uh, selecting the right components, the measurements, the print design and marker making. Then followed by that, a printing and cutting stage where you sort of create a product. Here, what you see is not a very uh, traditional way of cutting. What we did uh, or explore in the project, a very interesting zero weight pattern cutting technology. So here, making a single piece pattern so that the amount of waste could be reduced. You can see that how we developed this. We did transfer printing here. And based upon that, we made this uh, pattern design. And then finally, the fabric has been printed. Then you can use uh, stitch or, or ultrasonic system to stitch them, and then you pack and ship the material. So that was the overall concept of the whole project and we demonstrated that we have a lot we had a uh, brands like salomon uh, in the the, uh, the outdoor brand which was a part of the project and we demonstrated these with a, with a proper value chain and we created all these stage-by-stage business processes and digitalized that into your system
and we demonstrated this complete end-to-end -end digital locally driven consumer driven uh, locally produced value chain when it comes to looking into from the point of view of different opportunities that this value chain renders in terms of the business model what we see is that there are you have your collection like a 3d component library or 3d product design these designs can be made by each brand uh, then you have grading rules material data patterns etc so this there is a collection in fact these collections instead of each brand there could be a, a platform which where the different brands goes in they have their own login accounts and this platform organizes this collection so basically you as a customer can log in into a third party multi-brand collection library you make your account maybe you pay a fee and at the same time different brands also make their own account and puts their designs their styles their grading material data into it so this is now a intermediate platform between the consumer and the brands a multi-service platform or a multi multi design platform uh, this can then where you choose this can be connected to a multi-brand platform like what we see is a commercial service provider like a uh, esp what is a esp it is actually a e-commerce service provider commerce service provider it means that it can also give opportunities to uh, provide this type of digital rendering virtual try-ons digital avatars as well so either they can they they have have it service providers in it or this is one one stop platform where you can have all these data services database services available once you have done the virtual try on which was the front end then you have to go into the order specification and that could be led by a multi service platform or a manufacturing service platform and this manufacturing service platform has the internal know how of the processes different types of digital tools different types of business processes and then they are converting this unique customer order that is being created here into a unique manufacturing order once the manufacturing order has been placed that goes into a production place and this production doesn't have to be one particular factory it could be a, a network of factories what we call by the concept of open manufacturing based upon the availability and the matchmaking between the type of product you have ordered and the right manufacturer or the supplier of the product that particular order can go into the right customer so there could be a production plan of queuing of the customer orders and based upon there is a series of factories that you see factory one factory two and the one which is available and the most better offering the right price point or the best price point is ever is having available uh, uh, opportunity to produce the product then they, the product is been produced by them so this could be a very open manufacturing setup what type of earning possibilities are there here you see that here it could be some sort of a service charges to the service provider the brand uh, gets service charges for putting them into the system here also a manufacturing service provider as a manufacturing price so how do you see that different scopes of different types of disruptive business model in this very uh, novel digitally enabled consumer driven local value chain we see uh, we can have a multi-service marketplace that you see here with the front end of e-commerce service provision and a manufacturing service provision and you can also have a digital local manufacturing as a service like open manufacturing set up here where the buying of the competitive manufacturing skills can take place. This gives possibility to have different types of uh, business models. What we see that the consumer is having a very omni-channel experience. They are logging into having an account and logging into a that commercial internet marketplace provider, as I was mentioning, where they can see all the uh, uh, digital collections provided by different types of brands because different designer brands, branded retailers are also having an account and they are having this online bespoke garment service and they are having an account on this internet marketplace so, uh, thing. 
so the front end of the, the e is e-commerce service provider. Different software companies having solutions like fitting services, 3D design services, sales configuration services, avatars, etc. They can also offer to sell or lease different softwares on this platform. And then these are multi-brand online stores with our inventory and offering a cloud service. And this is connected to a manufacturing as a service system, which is a very flexible set of mini factories uh, and flexible in the sense, as I mentioned, that one order is raised and based upon the uh, matchmaking between the order that has been placed and the availability of the right custom uh, supplier and the manufacturer, the order is been allocated. So we see that different types of business formats are potentially seen in this very digitally interconnected platform model. To extend share this work, I will also present a little bit further onto a digital technology platform and related business models. That is the scope of a new uh, or a recent, uh, again, EU funded project that we are doing in uh, with a lot of other academic partners and business partners. This digital platform uh, has uh, is aimed towards this B2B2C integrated uh, business model and value chain, business to business to consumer. From the business to consumer side, it aims at creating a computational interactive digital system with interactive communication between the consumers and the professionals, very much in line with what was us mentioning in the Roll to Back project. Uh, create virtual garments, uh, create personalized digital solutions or design solutions. On the back end, in the uh, supply chain side, moving from a very traditional supply chain to a very knowledge based supply chain with more manufacturing as a service, which is fully connected, uh, providing products in small batches as a result, having a very flexible manufacturing system of small cities manufacturing, small batch manufacturing, also first fast delivering and quick response. Uh, this offers a scope for offering different types of e-training tools, e-education tools uh, in terms of uh, cloud computations to the consumers, to the brands, uh, multi-ended multi interfaces, and also much more uh, high degrees of data transparency in terms of digital data interchange and exchange. And that is the source of the uh, development of a complete B2B2C interactive business model per se, where we see that these type of business models could be adding value to uh, in different ways for enhance, enhancing e-commerce experience, by for enhancing um, local networks of producers of customized products in small series and uh, 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 more fast uh, manufacturing in a high cost environment. Uh, this can be also creating enhancing vertically integrated manufacturing uh, to order to have a very completely integrated, enhanced uh, and interactive supply chain for custom delivering customized products. This customization, as I mentioned, could be in the style, content, but also functionalities of the product. But also customization also includes to additional services like training services, communication services, uh, data handling services, etc. So when it comes to uh, the profit formula, how in these different business models, different structures of a very end-to-end -end digitally integrated value chain, how to create profit, we see that there are different options that is possible. One, we see that the consumer buys the product from the e-commerce service provider at the price, which is the market price. Uh, the e-commerce service provider pays uh, a manufacturing cost to the manufacturer and the manufacturer pays a material cost to the material supplier. And here the e-commerce provider is a, is a part of the branded company, one brand and their e-commerce channel. What we can transform is that what if the e-commerce service provider is a multi-brand e-commerce service provider and, and the brand companies all log in and have an account in this multi-brand service uh, e-commerce service provider and the e-commerce service provider provides a give margin to the different brands so the rest of the structure is similar but only thing is the e-commerce provider is a multi-brand and it, uh, it it gives a margin to the brand and it's not a part of the individual brand like often you see that zalando for example or many other 
uh, multi brands which are uh, e commerce service provider. They have perhaps their own line of private level as well, but they are also selling other brand products. A more, a more transformational uh, profit formula that we have been discussing in line with the two projects uh, earlier in, as a futuristic way is that we can see that here the e commerce service provider could go into a market pricing with the consumer, but also here we can add a market manufacturing service provider that there is a multi multi brand multi service manufacturing service provider like in manufacturing as a service and there is a service search which is provided by the e-commerce company to the manufacturing service provider and then a, so on a manufacturing cost on the material cost. so we see the different types of profit generation formula or basically the revenue streams are different when it comes to the different types of value chain models so for you, in order to continue further and know further about the business model, we discussed about the different business model, the business model canvas as a tool. We went into the digital fashion business model. We asked, discussed about digitalization of the products and services, and at the same time, digitalization of the organizations with certain examples. We then go, went into the aspect of uh, intermediation and disintermediation and how this disintermediation is sort of re revolutionizing and transforming the landscape, digital landscape within which the business models and the supply chain and this value chain will operate. As a result, uh, what is important is that we are creating a landscape of higher digital data transparency, lower market barriers, and a possibility of creating a more end-to-end -end interactive integrated digital value chain. We discussed with the example of this two uh, EU funded project, uh, how we demonstrated this type of interactive end-to-end -end, uh, consumer driven, local, pro locally produced uh, value chains, digitally oriented value chains. And in connection to that, how platforms can play a role in order to uh, create different types of activities and values. So for a new business uh, who wants to get into this uh, bandwagon of this transformation, digital transformation, how they should start with. So here you see that there is a step-by-step -step guideline process. Before you start, you should gather a key team who should you should employ within your company in order to uh, map up your competitors, map up your business model. Then uh, start, off, start off with map, mapping the most important, most critical aspects of the business model what we discussed uh, with the example of the make to measure shirt. Uh, with the current state, they identified only after this visual mapping, they were able to identify where the, are the focus areas for attention in order to transform and add on to the new aspects of the digital business model. Once you have done that, you connect this with your building blocks of the business model of where these most important aspects lie along the business model canvas. Does the attention needs to be in the value proposition, in the customer segment, revenue stream, where does it lie? And based upon this, only you will be able to create a clear blueprint of where the attention to transform your digital business model is required. Either you incrementally change your digital business model or you are transforming from a very non-digitalized business model, analog business model to a very digitalized way of organ organizing your business. Then uh, also think about the current state where you are and from there review what you are good at, what you are not good at, and based upon that create a more impactful visionary model. These are then the source from this source of current business model and the next steps creates an insightful way to understand what is the future business model. If you want to know more about this step-by-step -step guideline, uh, I would recommend you to this uh, link. And also in the next slide, as you see that there are several online tools for business model development, which are very self-explanatory. So you will be able to go in and explore yourself and work on, try your hands, make your hands dirty with this uh, doc, uh, websites. And there will be a lot of lessons learned. Some supplementary read readings uh, on digital business model on the book, Digital Business Model uh, by this guy. Uh, you can download the entire book online free of cost via this link. And there are also two add-on journal articles that you can 
available that is available as well for reading. Uh, so thank you. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Bye bye.